Magandang umaga. Uh, uh, for this portion, uh, we want to talk about realizing the vision uh, and to address the question, uh, if the vision uh, laid out before us, uh, the Filipinos' vision for self, whether this is uh, realizable. As we read in the previous presentation in 2040, all Filipinos will enjoy a stable and comfortable lifestyle, secure in the knowledge that we have enough for our daily needs and wants, that we can plan and prepare for our own and our children's futures. Our families live together in a place of our own, yet we have the freedom to go where we desire, protected and enabled by a clean, efficient, and fair government. I think it's good to keep repeating that to ourselves. Can we have the next slide? So I guess at this point, the question that many of you may have in mind is whether this vision is realizable. And for us in NEDA, the answer is a resounding yes. It is possible with the right policies and programs. We recognize, however, that government has a critical role to play in supporting the realization of these aspirations. Government needs to provide enabling conditions to help Filipinos build up their resources, including physical, intellectual, and financial, by fostering sustained economic growth, investing in people, and protecting them against shocks that destabilize them. The government also needs to provide the appropriate rules of the game, the institutions that ensure that the proper conditions are enforced fairly and equally. Sustained public investments to close the country's infrastructure gap will be important in removing bottlenecks that have limited the potential of various sectors of the economy and allowing the benefits of growth to be spread more widely. We also need to provide an environment that fosters competition and rewards innovation as they are critical for long-term growth. Government needs to sustain public investment in the country's most important asset, its people. Investments in health and education will ensure the availability of a healthy, highly trainable and skilled labor force, allow the poor to benefit more from growth, and foster the development of a more entrepreneurial society. The state also needs to adequately protect its citizens against social, environmental, and economic instability. This includes the protection against peace or threats against peace and security, as well as health and environmental risks. With respect to institutions, the focus group discussions and survey results clearly indicate the strong demand for a clean, efficient, and service-oriented government. Filipinos believe that eliminating corruption is important in achieving a better future. Not only large-scale or grand corruption that we often read in the newspapers, but more importantly, too, small-scale petty corruption the kind that victimizes the poorest among us. Ease and efficiency of government transactions is considered important. Empirical studies indicate, okay, this is a product of uh, the technical studies that accompany this visioning exercise. 
The empirical studies indicate that with the right policies, those that I have enumerated uh, earlier, improvements in productivity and efficiency can triple our gross national per capita income to about $11,000 in 25 years, allowing majority of our people to enjoy nearly high income country standards of living. Note that over the last 33 years, 1981 to 2014, we were only able to raise our real per capita income by 1.8 times. And if we follow that growth trajectory, the, uh, the, lower, uh, the lower curve or line, okay, that in fact is almost horizontal, is going to be uh, our uh, path until 2040 if we follow the old uh, or the, the, the former growth pattern. However, in contrast, if we were to undertake the reforms that are needed, the trajectory will be represented by that uh, red upward sloping curve. Without reforms, let me repeat, per capita income can only grow to around $5,000 over a period of 25 years, which is not even double the $3,500 per capita income that we are experiencing today. The impact of poverty will depend both on the outcomes, both on the robustness of economic growth as well as how it is distributed. This chart shows the possibility of eradicating poverty by 2040, if not sooner. And that result depends on how robust or how strong economic growth is, as well as how it is distributed. The uppermost curve uh, assumes that there will be weak growth accompanied by uh, very small changes, very small improvements in, uh, in inequality or inequality in the distribution of income, whereas the lowermost curve uh, which is red, I think, from where you're sitting, is uh, uh, fast growth that is accompanied by a reduction in inequality. So weak income growth, coupled with elevated disparity in income, can weigh down the efforts to eradicate poverty. On the other hand, if inequality declines significantly, Poverty cuts are deeper, and the process of eradicating poverty is shorter. The analysis suggests that if strong growth is accompanied by reductions in inequality, poverty could be eradicated even before 2040. In other words, this will only be obtained if economic growth continues to be robust and inclusive. But what does having a per capita income of $11,000 mean? A concrete example would be Malaysia, whose per capita income was $11,120 as of 2014. And it actually took Malaysia 33 years to triple its real per capita income to this level. What does that mean in terms of uh, the, the, uh, the incidence of poverty? If we use the comparable one, $1.90 a day international uh, benchmark for the extreme poverty line, uh, Malaysia has managed to reduce extreme 
poverty incidence below 1%. Okay. Uh, this means that in terms of the growth that we are experiencing, in terms of the poverty incidence that we are experiencing, although there has been some progress there, there is still a long way to go. And we need to uh, use the aspirations of our people as a starting point in order to address these problems. The vision of Filipinos for the country, we dare summarize in these words. The Philippines shall be a country where all citizens are free from hunger and poverty, have equal opportunities enabled by a fair and just society that is governed with order and unity. A nation where families live together, thriving in vibrant, culturally diverse, and resilient economies. So earlier we said, we, or we showed vision for self uh, at a more aggregate level, uh, as we try to address those aspirations, uh, this is the vision for the country as a whole. The road to realizing this vision, however, is filled with challenges. Firstly, it needs to survive a change in administration four times over the next 25 years. Four times over the next 25 years. And reference has already been made to our usual practice that because of these six-year terms and the proclivity of uh, administrations to change even worthwhile programs of previous administrations, there is that threat of uh, uh, interrupting or disrupting the, the, uh, the growth trajectory. It will also require a lot of patience, as not all the ambitions that we have uh, shown earlier will be achievable immediately nor simultaneously. Consider, for example, the, uh, the aspiration to, of, of, of everyone having his or her own house and lot and living in a city. Okay? Uh, so there is a task of leadership there that involves being able to process these aspirations even while using this as a starting point and understanding why those aspirations for now are the way they are, and to recognize that between now and 2040, these aspirations are bound to change as well as the country uh, uh, makes progress. So we will have to sustain the momentum over a period of 25 years under changing conditions requiring adjustments and flexibility in our strategies. So what does this imply in terms of our next steps? One, it means that we will need to build a broad constituency for the vision and the reforms needed to attain it. Among others, this will involve a good communication strategy to communicate the vision to all stakeholders so as to gain widespread recognition and acceptance. The vision also needs to be translated into specific goals, measurable targets, and intermediate milestones while allowing for flexibility in strategies. For example, we will need to take into consideration the country's international commitments under the 2030 Sustainable Development Goals. 
The strategies needed to achieve these targets will then be the subject of the next four Philippine development plans. Institutional arrangements will also have to be adjusted to ensure horizontal and vertical policy coherence and sustained implementation. So as we suggested earlier, it is clear to us that government needs to play its role in making this vision a reality. But clearly, we cannot do it alone. We will need everyone's help and cooperation. So the question I leave you with in closing is this, what can you do to support this vision and turn it into a reality for Filipinos? Thank you for your attention. Magandang umaga.